Well, hello, Simon. This is my back. Big fan, long time viewer of your channel. I wanted to make a quick video for you here. I love buying used clubs. Guys, how are you doing? Welcome back to a brand new video. It's Simon here with another what's in your bag video. These videos have gone down incredibly well. I hope that I've helped a lot of you. If it hasn't been your bag, hopefully you've got some general idea from someone else's bag if you had a similar question. As I say, I've got thousands not thousands, that's a big exaggeration. I've got hundreds of emails from you guys as well as hundreds of Instagram messages as well. I'm trying to filter through them and obviously answer back to everyone. Some videos haven't worked, some pictures haven't loaded it, some emails haven't worked for example. So obviously it's difficult for me to use all of those and then I'm replying and then those emails get lost. It's a bit of a mess, but we're getting through them. I do believe this is one of the best episodes that I've produced. Um, I'll answer tons of questions, and hopefully this will obviously help you out, not only with your swing, but more importantly about your bag, and um, where the misses are in your bag, what things need to be filled, what bargains need to be had, um, and where you can obviously find those bargains. And quickly, before we get into this video, I have been asked from American Golf in Cleveland to promote their Just Giving page. They've had a cool collaboration in terms of a set of three wedges that have been personalized with the NHS. Basically, they're gonna raise 10,000 pounds on this Just Giving page and then gift those set of three wedges away to one lucky donator. Five pounds donation equals one entry. Um, I think it's a cool collaboration. Obviously, we're very grateful to have the NHS in the UK. Um, it's been tough for all of us, but at the same time, I have just been sat at home for four weeks making YouTube videos. So exactly, I'm not exactly in the worst place in the world. Um, and when they asked me to obviously um, promote the link, then I said, of course I would, no problem at all. But let's get straight back into the video. Okay, first up is Edwin. Now this is a great bag and a great transitional period that a lot of you are gonna be in. Um, got tailor made pretty much everything, which is not an issue whatsoever. He's got reg flex and everything, but he looks like he swings it quite fast, which to be honest, not uncommon for a lot of you guys. Obviously a lot of you going these 28 handicappers, 24 handicappers, 20 handicappers are hitting it like 300 yards. I was one of those guys. Um, I could hit it 300 yards when I started the game, but could I hold a 10 foot putt now? So, um, uh, interestingly, he plays off 18. Um, uh, he, um, well, hasn't got a handicap, but he probably shoots 90 on average. He's thinking about getting a new driver, um, uh, which definitely could be a possibility because he's got a reg flex 10 and a half aero burner, which isn't the best driver ever. Um, and also thinking about swapping the irons to P790s. Now, taking Edwin's yardages into account, he hits a seven iron, 165 to 175, which is quite far for a seven iron. What I would say is, if we quickly have a look at the loss of an aero burner, 29.5 degrees. So realistically, that's quite de-lofted. So if we look back at Edwin's yardages, for example, and we go back, now his eight iron goes about 155 to 160, which is probably a traditional seven iron. And that's probably what I want Edwin going forward to shoot, hit with a seven iron. I don't really want a 175 um, seven iron, because again, the yardages are so far out. He can obviously swing it, he can obviously hit it hard. So he's thinking about P790s. Now P790s are already 30 degrees as they are. So let's quickly go into his bag. And I'm personally, as a club fitter, now there's two ways of club fitter can do this. A club fitter can easily go, look, you can hit your 7 iron 180. And the person goes, oh, brilliant. I can now hit the ball even further than I used to. But um, uh, there's no point in having anything lower in the bag. Or you can go, we're actually going to lose some distance. But look at the height we've now got. Look at how more precision we've got with these clubs. Look at the dispersion that we've now got with these clubs. How do they feel? Etc. Etc. And a lot of club fitters I've known, especially the ones that do the fitting days, are just there for distance. They go, here's your set, here's another 10%. Doesn't matter what's on the bottom. And he will hit his P790s further because the P790s are great irons. Um, uh, they just so low spinning for their launch angle, they're just rockets. And for certain people, the P790s are great. However, without seeing Edwin swinging it, I wouldn't recommend the P790. Now we're gonna quickly look at, so obviously aero burner, driver, I think that definitely should swap out. I think the F9's a great shout. Really decent price, don't bother with the speed zone. Get stiff flex um, at 10 and a half degree, because again, you can loft it up and down. 
Um, I would prefer you get the F9 M5, that's my personal experience. M5, very low spinning, you need to be a class driver of the ball to use the M5. Just like the M3, just like the M1. So F9, I think more forgiving, more in your wheelhouse, go and buy one. The P790s, I potentially wouldn't bother. Now, if we went to, um, he said Golf Bidder, which is a good question. He went into Golf Bidder and he was having a look at uh, P790s. I've quickly gone to their website. I think Golf Bidder is a great website, by the way. I've got nothing bad to say about Golf Bidder. However, you do pay the price because they're zero fakes and they've got a reputable um, name, brand, everything else. So you're paying the premium for it, but you know what you're getting is quality. Now, just for seven to pitch in wedge, you're talking 393. 677 for um, three to pitch match, and that's quite a good deal because you can sell the three iron for about 100 quid by itself anyway. Um, uh, so that's a lot. Now you could go down that route, but that is £677. And as I said, I don't think the P790s are good for you, Edwin. I would go for a lesser known brand. Interesting, let's see what they do. P7, let's see if they've got any in. P770s. Right, go. Now, P770 was very overlooked. 5 to pitch and wedge, 415, 427, 457. The P770 and the P750 are very underlooked clubs um, uh, because the P790 did so well and the distance etc club fitting, look how far it goes. However, for traditional lofts, for where you want to be going forward, for someone that realistically needs to play something a bit less lofted, I would recommend a P750 or P770. It's going to give you the same feel, same sound, Etc. Etc. You can get four to pitching wedge here. Buy it now, three seven five, and they're in great condition. I personally, let's quickly have a look what loft a P seven seventy is. P seven seventy loft. That for me, in terms of long term gain, you're going to get better as a golfer. I believe that's going to be better. 33 degrees with your 7 iron, it just makes sense. Yes, you can go P790, yes, it's more forgiving. Realistically, Edwin, we want to be playing off 10. I think progression, everything else, A, it's gonna be cheaper, B, you're gonna get better condition, C, you got more choice, and I think it's gonna give you a level of ball striking um, uh, difficulty that you need in your game at the moment. I think the rest of the bag's fine, to be honest. You could probably whack in another hybrid in there, um, uh, or maybe a driving iron because you've got the club head speed. I think three was great, leave it alone. Cobra F9 for the top of the bag, um, and then potentially look at those more bladed tailor-made irons. Okay, so the next one is from Josh. Now, Josh loves a tinker and goes in heavy detail throughout the bag. Um, uh, now, he plays off 15. Um, he's knocking on the door of a 100 mile an hour driver swing. He did say he had been in a car accident as well, um, so I'm glad that you've recovered from that, but obviously got back issues. Um, uh, and it's very important when it comes to golf, one of my first questions of any lesson or club fit is have you got any injuries? Because you've got to work around that. The last thing you want to do, especially with a torsional sport like golf, is compound any bad injuries you have in your body. However, let's move on. Interesting bag here. Interesting bag. And the reason I say interesting bag is um, because there's a lot of good stuff that he's doing and I like. Um, and to be honest, the bag is like exceptionally good. Now, I love Josh because he's sent in the prices of what he's spent on everything, which I think is just important for everyone else to have a look. Um, he thinks he spent about $1,000 on the bag, um, but that's with a donated offer. He won a long putt contest with his dad and he's got a serious Odyssey putt at the bottom of the bag. Overall though, he's so passionate about it, he apologizes for the length of email. Do not apologize. I can talk as much golf as the next man, so um, more detail for me, the better. So let's have a look at his bag. I'm gonna flip this over so you guys can see it full screen. So he's got Rogue Sub-Zero, Ping G400 three wood, which again is really good. I like both of those. He's got a five wood, is that, yeah, five wood with the, um, mind you, heaven wood. I think that's seven, is it? I might be wrong, hang on. So I think it's got a nine degree. I need to go back in the email. because I'm pretty sure Callaway Epic, they kind of rhymed all of their um, uh, woods, for example, with, Let's move that, 20 degree. It's close, isn't it? See, that says heavenward, but realistically that is a five wood, and 18 degrees is a five wood. Strong lofted five wood, five wood, six wood. Anyway, I love the Epic. I think that's a great buy, by the way, for anyone that's looking for a great fairway wood. I'd put it up there with the Ping um, G400. 
He's then got P760s, and the reason I love these irons, he's got stiff graphite, which I think is a great shout in the bag. He's got a nice little combo set of P730s at the bottom, straight into an SM7, then into some nice Vokey wedges at the bottom, and then his Odyssey O-Works putter with a very nice cover down the bottom there. Now, he's got stiff graphite. Um, and for anyone that's wondering um, uh, what stiff graphite is or should you get stiff graphite, I would recommend if you are not necessarily struggling for club head speed. Now, obviously, he's not slow. He's got some decent yardages. Um, however, the lightness of a shaft helps. He even says in his, um, uh, in his email <clears throat> that a light shaft actually gives him better feeling. Do not be afraid to get graphite shafts. Like the um, production and the value that, um, or the R&D that go into shafts now is so good. I'm, I give it three years until they start producing X stiff graphite shafts. Because the feeling's better, it's dampening, you don't get as much vibration up the shaft, it's lighter, you can change the torque more. There's so many things you can do with graphite shafts that you can't do with um, uh, Still, still is just one component that pretty much goes in one shape and the only way you can step in terms, the only way you can bend a steel shaft is by putting a stepping process in it or like a rifle shaft where they taper it. That's the only way you can do it with graphite, they layer it over. So you can have so many different qualities into a graphite shaft, which I highly recommend. Um, overall, I think the bag looks great. Obviously, if you're going to get down, there's nothing that needs to be changed realistically. It's just going to be that grind and practice. But overall, I think the bag looks fantastic. Um, I think you've done a great job on it. I love the passion that's gone into the bag as well. Um, and I think it's great to see someone using stiff graphite. Um, and hopefully a lot of people that are watching this are going to take up that. If they're going for a fitting or they're thinking about it, they're going to at least entertain the idea of using graphite shafts in their irons. Okay, so the next bag is from Russ. Now, Russ, um, I think, is a great person to um, try and mirror and copy if you do get into the game um, when you're younger. Now, um, he's 43 years old now. He's a five handicapper. Um, he's been playing since he was younger, but obviously had a gap in between like um, university um, and then obviously later life, which is probably the majority of golfers that start off when they're young. Um, work, family, busy, etc, etc. Now, he had a great transition and he's just basically tinkered himself. Um, uh, again, I think the bag's in great shape. I don't think he needs to change anything, um, but he even goes through and tells us where he is with his bag, what he had when he started, um, uh, how he's got to what he's got now. Um, and my only um, thing that I would take away from what Russ has done is that he knows what works for him because he's played the game long enough. So we're gonna go into his bag, we're gonna show it. Um, he does a good commentary, but I'm just gonna quickly go over it so you guys um, get the full picture. Um, uh, now. Hey Sam. Oh, by the way, my name's Simon. <laughs> this is the best bit, listen to this, I love this. Hey Sam, uh, big fan, long time viewer of your channel. I wanted to. Long time viewer of the channel, my name's Simon. Um, Russ, I'm only messing with you. Um, uh, okay, so Russ then goes on. He talks about, he's got some um, like TP um, RSA, RAC forged irons, which is basically what he got back into the game with. He did have Ben Hogan blades um, uh, when he was much younger and probably playing a lot more golf, for example. He then got the tailor-made RSCs. And I love this because it just shows me a progression of um, uh, getting uh, um, uh, different clubs throughout the period of your um, golfing career. Now, a lot of me, a lot of people come to me and go, oh, I used to hit my seven iron 170 yards. And I go, well, you were 40 years younger. Um, uh, and it's something very difficult as golfers, especially the ones that have been playing the game so long, to then get back to where they were. And rather than going massive, massive cavity, hot blade, um, muscle backs, he realizes what he needs in terms of control and what he needs in between power. So he got the 7 two, uh, 710 AP2s. This was another set he had, so that was progression from the RACs. He said everyone raved about them. All this stuff is second hand. I love that Cleveland putter, by the way. That Cleveland putter looks great. Um, 
and that bag in the background is what he's using at the moment. So he went on to his 710s and used those for a while. He put some AP1s at the top end of the bag to give it a combo set, which he got for $35 per club. Um, uh, and finally, where he is now, he's now gone to the Ping i500. So he's slowly gone and got bigger and bigger, bigger clubs as he's slowly got older, potentially hasn't had enough time to play as much as he used to, loss of flexibility, etc. However, he's made that steady transition. He's tried the P790, he's tried all the muscle bags out there, he just finds them too hot, and you only know that if you've been playing the game long enough. Like, if you are a good player, and I think the moral of the story is, is that the more you play this game, the less likely you're gonna need me. Now, I'm giving you this advice because you've probably been playing the game one to five years, and you're like, oh, should I do this, should I do that? Now, I love Russ's bag. Um, uh, he didn't really ask me any questions, to be perfectly honest. And to be honest, he knows, but he's showing his bag. He's proud of it. I love the face pack. Is that a Betanardi part as well in the bag? That's really good. Um, I think the bag looks fantastic. He obviously has a great passion for the game. He loves the game, um, uh, which is brilliant. Now, he tried the sim this year. He got a couple more yards out of it, but he was like, why would I bother getting spending $600 to get a few more yards? I completely agree. At the end of the day, four or five more yards, one mile an hour ball speed on average, isn't gonna get you any better at golf. So he's got the M1, he's got the Epic Flash, um, and he didn't mean to have ping irons at the bottom end of the bag. I will scrub through this and have a look. He, he didn't mean to have it, there they are. Um, it just so happened they worked. I think the ping i500 is a great iron. I think it's a great iron that Ping have brought out. I do feel like Ping make solid irons for um, the beginner golfers, mid handicappers, low handicappers. They've always struggled. The eye blade flopped. Um, uh, they've never been able to create something sexy. The i500, I believe, is sexy. Um, and also at the same time, it gives you that level of forgiveness for people like Russ, where they're just like, you know what? I want to have something that's controlling, but I do need a bit of help. I do need a bit of feel, I do need a bit of power, and I think he's made a great choice in where he is. He's been to fittings, etc., etc., and he knows what he wants. So I think it's a great message um, from Russ and myself that this game's a journey, don't rush into things. Don't panic. I think that's the one thing I do want to say. Like A lot of you probably don't want to hear it, but I'm telling you guys, wait a year, wait two years, then decide on your irons. Let's see where you are. Rather than let's buy a set of irons and then six months later, oh, I've just come down 10 shots. These irons are now not good enough for me. Or the opposite, I'm getting slower, but I still want to cling on to that idea that I need a blade. Well, do you need a blade? They're the kind of questions I'd ask. So Russ, thank you for sending your bag. I think it looks great. Um, Simon here. Um, uh, and um, have a great rest of the summer, hopefully when we're all back out. Okay, so the next bag is from Ian. Ian is 14 years old. Um, I've played twice this year and shot around 140. Um, although I do have the skill to shoot lower. Driver goes about 175 to 200. Um, uh, 5 iron, 6 iron, um, uh, about 125 um, to 130. I love this, by the way. Ian, thank you for sending your bag. Um, it's taken a lot of courage, you might not think so. Um, but I believe someone that's obviously just starting the game, shooting the scores you have, the yardage you have, it's very easy to send in a bag where you're hitting 160 yards and you've got this, this, and this. And blah. Whereas I like someone that's just started the game. I do feel like I'm gonna be able to help you more than most um, and hopefully answer a lot of questions that people have. So thank you for sending in your bag. Now you don't know your swing speed, no one does, normally. Um, uh, people that send me emails do because obviously they're very into their golf, but you don't, I love that. Um, uh, you're saying, what do you think you should change? I've been thinking about getting newer clubs, but I don't know if I should get secondhand or new, what do you think? Definitely don't get new, haven't even, I have seen your bag. But even if I didn't see the bag, as soon as I read that, I was like, don't get new, okay? Um, uh, until, Realistically, you've been playing the golf, unless the golf, unless you've been playing golf for four years, don't get new. Unless you're breaking 80 consistently, don't get new. They're the two advocates I have. If you've been playing four years, by all means, go and get fitted. If you've broken 80 consistently and um, with your starter set, go and get fitted. That's the only rule of thumb of beating the four years old rule. Now, let's have a look at your bag. Um, thank you for doing it in landscape as well. I love that, listen to this, it's so good. This is 
my what's in my bag. What's in my bag? Um, uh, right, okay. Ian, let's go through it. First of all, driver, perfect. Don't worry about it. At the end of the day, three wood burner. Again, I prefer that burner to the aero burner actually. And the burner super fast, I think, that came out as well. So actually, I had that burner. So I know what it's like. Grease. Good. Um, uh, stiff flex, again, don't worry about the shafts. I think that hybrid, the H1, Stage again, one. good for you. Let me just turn my volume down slightly. Um, uh, the H1, forgiving hybrid, I think that's a good addition for your bag as well. Stiff flex, again, you're gonna only get faster, don't worry about it. Um, uh, in terms of your yard, is all gonna come up in the next two years, regardless of what you do. Now, he's got quite bladed King Cobras. Now, I'm not particularly sure in terms of that model, however, as I've said in countless videos, when you start the game, get something, they're not blade blade, but they're more like AP2s. I think that's good. I think you should have smaller heads when you start the game, because it's gonna make you a better player. Got a Voki down the bottom there. Now, the only things I would say is, if you're starting the game, I would spend money on a putter. Now, your putter, Nothing wrong with it. And by all means, you're going to break 100, no question, with that if you practice. That being said, if you do want to spend some money, I wouldn't buy anything brand new, but if you want to spend, sorry, I didn't see where you're from, but if you want to spend 50, 60 pounds or 50, 60 dollars, get like an Odyssey two ball putter, get something that's a bit more face balanced. It's going to make it a lot easier in the short term. Keep the dead center, because when you get down to 10, 11 handicap, then break that back out and start working on your stroke. But I think in terms of motivation, shooting better scores, if you're shooting 140, I imagine you're having a lot of three putts, I imagine you're having a lot of four putts. Let's get something that's a bit more forgiving. Let's get something um, uh, with a bigger grip. Let's get something that's gonna get you holding a few more putts. Alignment as well is very important when you start the game. So Odyssey two ball, um, uh, or an old spider tailor-made. We're talking like ghost spider, where it's like 50, 60 quid. That's what I'd spend money on. Should you buy anything new? Definitely not. Um, overall, I think the bag looks great. I think you've done a fantastic job in terms of sending in the bag and videoing it. So thank you ever so much for doing that. Um, uh, just keep practicing, keep enjoying it. Ian, well done. Okay, so the next one is from Jamie. Now this isn't more about his bag, but more about his swing as he sent me a couple of videos of his swing. And obviously this is a what's in your bag. However, I do feel like this will help a lot of you that watch this and you might have a similar problem, i.e. a lot of you say to me, Simon, I can follow through when I practice swing, but I can't follow through when the ball's there. Interesting. This is why. He has a very low ball flight, so it all adds up what he's telling me, by the way. Um, uh, normally, I can't. I find it very difficult to coach people on videos because what the ball flight is the main way any coach can tell you what you're doing right or wrong. Then you track back to impact factors, pre-swing factors, in-swing factors. I'm getting boring. Um, uh, but um, uh, however, it all kind of adds up. So here's a low ball flight. He's six foot five, by the way. He's a big boy. He's got an inch and a quarter on all of his clubs. Um, jumbo grips on everything apart from the wedges. Um, uh, so that's realistically, and these yardages are good. Here's a decent ball. He hasn't said his handicap. Um, but he wants to get a higher ball flight. Should he change anything? Interesting. He's got 716 AP1s, which okay, they're de-lofted. So potentially you could go, well actually, if you get something a bit more high lofted, that's gonna help, and it would. But nothing cannot be fixed with technique. I.e., if McElroy used his clubs, he would still shoot four under. Um, uh, so, let's have a look at his swing. And this is interesting. I'm gonna keep this short and simple. He says he can follow through on his practice swings, he can't do it with the ball. So watch this. Club at the top there is facing us. So the club face itself is facing where we are. I can't see his grip. I imagine it's quite strong. Therefore, with no ball, he can release the club, doesn't matter. However, where's that ball going if there was a ball there? Oh, he actually showed me face on as well. Class, good man. So he's got quite a strong grip with his right hand. With no ball, he can follow through. However, with a ball, he can't follow through. Any guesses why? Watch this. So he hits the ball, good strike by the way. Can hit it, but cuts it off. 
Nice little stinger there. So he hits a ball flight and he has to hit punch shots to hit it straight. Here's the problem, not the problem, but here's why you can do it with the practice swing and not the ball. If you're on the golf course and you follow through, it's going left, left and left. That's with driver, that's with irons, that's with everything. However, you've learned as a human being through practice and everything else, if you hold off I, your hands at impact, hit this kind of low punch shot, that club face is now at the target, therefore it finishes on the target. The only issue with this is, is that you're de-lofting all your clubs at impact by about eight degrees or more. Therefore, you're hitting stingers into everything. If you were to release naturally, not get so far ahead of it, that ball's going left. So I bet you flush it left. I bet the ball looks great when it goes left. However, to, at the moment for you to hit the ball straight, you have to hit the stinger approach. You weaken that grip. You can follow through as much as you like. It's not going left. You're going to get more height. There's going to be more dynamic loft at impact. There's nothing wrong with hitting that cutoff shot. There's tons of great golfers that hit it. However, if you're getting to the point where the lower clubs in your bag are just like basically just getting off the deck, I imagine you struggle, for example, with like the hybrid or the two iron off the deck because it's just going to be so low lofted. It's basically going to be a worm burner. Um, uh, so realistically, that's why everything is going so far. If you were to weaken that grip, for example, you can do the same thing um, and the ball should finish on target. I don't know what your swing path is, um, but at the same time, that's my advice. If you want to follow through and hit the ball straight and you want to gain more height because you need that loft impact, at the moment, you're having to saw everything off just to get the ball to go straight. I hope that makes sense. Okay, so the next one is from Camilo or Camillo. Apologies if I have pronounced that wrong he's from Colombia so thank you for sending in your video very interesting this and I think this is going to be more reassurance than anything so he's been playing since 2018 in November realistically he's been practicing since October 2019 so we're talking seven months here practicing properly um, he barely has scores of 120 um, now um, uh, his handicap index is 10.26 um, so he's off 10 my lowest round on nine holes is 40, um, and 18 holes is 82. Obviously, with such a hard course, he's playing at 7,400 yards. Like, the stroke index is going to be stupid every time he plays. So, if he's getting a handicap around there, like, even if he shoots over his handicap, he's still going to get cut because how difficult the golf course is. Now, this is going to be just reassuring him about where he is now. He's come, like, to be playing off what he's playing off around this course is exceptional progress and shows how much work and effort he's putting into the game. He's practicing three to four times a week. He's getting 18 holes in every Monday, um, plus gym, plus cardio work. So he loves it, which is great. Um, what I would say is, is be patient. Now, his bag, consistency, everything else looks great. He absolutely smashes his R blades. So very similar to the start. Um, uh, I would potentially get eyes that are less lofted for that kind of control, but he's playing a course at 7,400 yards, so that's a tough one. This is the price he's paid for everything in his bag, by the way, which I think is really important for you guys to see. Driver 73, three with 38 pounds, five with 25 pounds, eyes 135, 450 pounds for the total, brilliant. Most of it off Facebook Marketplace, which is, by, by the way, a great place to look for irons um, and clubs. No, just go and pick them up. Like, if someone lives within 20 miles of you, there's some great bargains because some people just don't want to go on eBay and don't want to post the, all that kind of hassle. Um, uh, he is, he's got, let's go into his bag. Let's have a look because... Um, he's really struggling with gapping between his pitching wedge um, that goes 150 yards and a gap wedge 130 because I imagine they're quite strong lofted. He's worried about missed shots. Um, his regular shot is a fade, but he doesn't he doesn't know how to shape shots. Putting is the worst part of his game. My lowest putting round in nine holes was 15. Interesting that mate, because I would take 15 all day long. <laughs> Right, let's have a look at his bag. So, bearing in mind, 450 pounds for the bag, love it. Three Vokies down the bottom there, which I think is brilliant. He's got 52, 60, and um, a 56. Now, I've said this in the past, that pitch image and that 52 is gonna have a massive gap, and the forgiveness between the two, so if he has a mishit with a 52, it's going 
he, I think he said it goes 130 yards, which is like far. Um, he did mention his altitude, and I don't know if that has anything to do with it, but that's a long way, okay? But if you miss hit that 52, it's going 100 yards, if that. Therefore, you're already struggling before you've started in terms of bad shots against good shots. Your good shot with your pitching mode, you say go 150. I could hit that pitch major 150, so I don't doubt you. Um, but then that's a big gap. Do you know what I mean? Like if you've got the flag at 132, what do you hit? Do you hit a half pitch and wedge? Do you hit a flat out 52? So I'd get another wedge in. I'd get a 46 degree wedge personally um, uh, to gap in between that. Or you're going to have to get eyes that are less lofted because again, those RBZs for the speed that you're hitting them level you off. Unfortunately, um, too much of gapping. So just like I said at the start. I'd have a look at some more bladed irons. You don't have to spend a fortune, I'm talking like 110 pounds, 150 pounds, get some like tighter CB irons. Yes, they're gonna be um, uh, less forgiving. Yes, they're gonna go a lot less distance, but that like, gapping and control is gonna be a lot easier. Overall, the bag looks great for 450 pounds. He talks about his putting. Putting 50, if you're shooting on average 30 putts a round. I, say, I know he said the best round is 15. But if you're averaging 30 putts around or 32 putts around for your handicap, that's okay. 28 is obviously class. And I know we talk about like tour pros and their putting average is like 28, 29. They're playing at golf courses where the stint meter is like 14 degrees, um, 14 degrees, like 14 on the stint meter and the undulation is just stupid. The pin positions are so tough. So they're just well class. If they play their local golf course, i.e. your golf course and the green's running at 10, their putting average is gonna be like 26. Do you know what I mean? Because their wedge is gonna be on fire, they're gonna be holding everything inside 10 foot. So realistically, for the average golfer to get down single figures, your putting average should be 28 to 30, and that will complement your wedge play as well as your putting. He talks about Scotty Cameron and his RTX, RX putter. I think both of them are great. Um, personally, if you're struggling with the putter, I'd go with the RX more than not, because it's gonna be more forgiving. Um, overall, I think the one thing I want to say is um, irons could be changed because it's going to give you more control. I think your yardage is just too big and wild. Um, I think you need some more loft there. I think you need more control, more position, more spin. But you've been playing since October 2019. You're playing on a course at 7,400 yards long. You're doing exceptionally well. I think you're doing all the right things. You're practicing three to four times a week. Um, uh, you've um, uh, got the motivation, your gym, your cardio. So to be honest, mate, I think you're doing everything you should be doing to get better. Like, if you tell me in two years time, you're not playing a four, I'll be gobsmacked. So just keep doing what you're doing. Patience is a virtue. I love the bag. Um, I love the mentality. Keep going.